figures are the only two figures that I have in the house not with the collection. These are Charlie and Mortimer, which were carved by Bob Isaacson. And he used to do the radio and broadcast museum tours and shows. And when he retired and they closed the museum, he decided that uh, they should come to the collection. So that's why those are here. But they're the only figures that are not within the group of the collection. Okay? And if you saunter into this room here as you go by. You can take pictures of them and then you can peruse around and look at the figures upstairs. Wow. Only edition that had the pictures of the McElroy figures advertised in it with a picture of the brothers. They normally sell from $80 to $125 for a copy if you can find it. I have one, two, three, four, five, five copies, $50 each if you want a copy. They're very, very hard to find. And uh, I actually have one over here with the, the page showing so I can show you the, uh, this is happy, happy. the picture. I don't have any books. As you can see, there's the pictures of the McElroy figures. Okay. And uh, the next page actually shows the brothers with the box. There's the carrying case. And then they are marionettes that they also made. So I have five copies. And like I say, it makes it seem like they're not rare, but these are like hen's teeth. Is this Lee's house or your house? This is my house. This is Lee's figure. Lee is, Lee is here. And he's a good friend of mine. He does a lot of work for me on this. We had a thing going. I said I converted the video to a profession. If you're taking a toy, I don't care what you do to it. It's still a toy. And all of a sudden, we're going to go down and we're going to Steve said, I just wanted to prove to you that I could build a figure. I didn't have to build a toy to build it, so I built you. I want it. I took a picture. I'm going to it. That sounds awesome. Four-year man. Like, you, now, one of the one of the things on the blog lately that I was showing was the Lucky Charlie figure, which is sitting dead center. I'm going to pick him. Let me grab him and hold him up so you all can see it. Now, this this is a great figure. It's a one of a kind Frank Marshall figure. This was uh, this was done in the 1920s. Um, yeah. Frank used, used the uh, punch uh, figure from Punch and Judy to do the head. And if you go to my blog, he's got uh, moving mouth, uh, spitter, smoker, and then uh, his eyes also. Okay. Um, when I got him, he had been painted in minstrel black. He was like tar baby with the white going around his mouth. And it had been done maybe 60 years ago. Under the black paint was a second paint job by Frank Marshall. And under the second paint job was the original paint job by Frank Marshall. But I had to strip it all off. It was a monstrous job. Took days and days of sanding to finally get it down to the wood. Then I had to, I used a little, little X-Acto knife 
and had to clean out all the paint from the carved lines that were in it. Once it was all cleaned and sanded, then I, I have a picture of Frank holding a figure like this. And I said, i got to compare it. And I blew the figure up and I looked at it. It turns out this is the figure that's in that picture. And uh, Bob Isaacson, who I talk about all the time, Bob is a mentor of mine, he was at Frank's shop his entire life. He was always at Frank's shop and he said he never ever saw only one of this figure. And this is it. This is the one. And Eddie would come out and the conga drum would open and he'd lift this figure right out of the conga drum. Unfortunately, you know, families, they don't know, and the family got rid of the conga drum, all of the uh, maracas that they used to use, the shirts with all the ruffles, because he had one hell of an outfit when he was on stage. But the figure is great, and what's really unreal, un unbelievable is I got the original figure that Eddie Garson used this year, the Ben Haven got the backup. <laughs> and the, the paper is not even ripped off my hands yet. It's the same as yeah. what it was received from Drake Marshall. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah, but it's the backup it's figure. It's the backup, and that one right. is the This one was the one that was used yeah. all the time. Yeah. So, so that's interesting because that's one of the recent uh, acquisitions. He, someone complained to the Van Haven because they thought that they were lying about having the figure because you, they knew you had it. Yeah. So, yeah. but they, they told me about that. believe it or not, was an accomplished ventriloquist. And in 1937, I believe, Paul gave Harry to Rita. And Rita used him her whole life. I bought him from the Winchell family. And uh, the controls are great because they're set up exactly how Paul used his controls. He sent it to the website and said, that was a figure that had Paul never had self-centering eyes on his figures. They were always manual. And what he did was he put a screw so he knew exactly where dead center was. And when, that, when his thumb was on it, it was dead center right there. And he used first finger for the mouth control. In front. In front. First finger in front. When I received this figure, I was so thrilled because I actually got something that Paul Winchell gave this to his sister. Yeah, so it was really it was the history.